GN is here, and the question now is, should you be pulling for Dragon Daddy or save for your girl, Camellia? Hello, Internet! And today we have a PowerPoint again. Should you be pulling Dragon Daddy by your boy? And let's just dive right in. GN overview, right? Let's take a look at how is GN being used these days and how strong is our Dragon Daddy? Now, the role of GN is clearly a main DPS from her kit on paper as well. Now, there's the thing, though. Here's the real role of GN on my second point here. He is actually a solo team. A DPS, or one of his main functions would be that. Another one of his main function, well, the main DPS, right? With a proper team like Varina, a shorekeeper, plus more Teffy and GN, that's his best team, and that defeats everything. Now, more than the point of solo TOA DPS, though, this is only unique to GN, and these days, people are using this to save Vigor in Tower Adversity. You see it on screen right now that I am using GN to clear like the easier mob stage, all of these which cause Vigor as well. Now, Vigor is basically where if you use up Vigor of a certain character, they won't be able to be used anymore. If you use all three characters in a team to beat these easy mob stages, you waste a lot of Vigor, right? So, one of the solutions, just use a singular GN to clear all the easy mob stages. That way you save your vigor on your Varina, save your vigor your more Teffy for someone else. It's really easy to do that with him. And that is point number two of his overview. Point number three here we have GN being tier 0.5 on Pritwin, which basically is a really trustable source. And well, me personally, I do agree as well. Only with Jin C being tier zero, right? Only Jin C is there, no one else. So yeah, GN, if you compare it to Jin C, certainly is not at the same caliber. But that's also the same case for a lot of other DPSs, which GN is included as tier 0.5, only one tier below Jin C. Now, this is pretty obvious. Like, you can use a good GN team with, as I mentioned, someone like Shorekeeper, Mortefi GN, and just destroy every boss out there, destroy every stage in TOA as well. Even up till the hardest version that we have, the Overdrive mode, I believe, a GN team that's properly built can clear everything. So, as an option for DPS, he certainly isn't one to just say is bad. But here's the one important question, though. The fourth point I have Power Creep or not? So, you see, with GN, he He's one of the first characters we ever had in the game. A lot of the times, the early characters, like for example, from Star Rail that I played, the early characters are power crept as heck, right? Now, are they still usable? Of course they are. However, to compare them with like the best of the best, they are just not comparable at all. Now, for the case of GN, it is not exactly the same yet, considering Wuwa is way, you know, young. Kuro has not been able to release characters so quickly to the point where even someone like GN is power crept. However, do you know that GN went from tier 0 to tier 0 0.5? With the release of Jin C for sure. So in the end, I'm gonna say, has he gotten power crapped? Not quite yet, but we do see a trend, right? Like there are a lot of characters that started at the top, Jin C comes in, a lot of supports for Jin C comes in as well, and they drop by a tier. Now a year later, would GN still be on this tier? I kind of doubt it, but then again, I wouldn't say Kuro would just be that crazy and just release all the modes that GN cannot beat as a 5 star. So in the end, I feel like Kuro has a good insight to how they want to update their game and have their game grow. So yeah, GN, I feel like if you really do love him and you pull him, he won't really be power creep yet, at least not for a while, I think. Probably maybe year two. And even then, I just can't believe Kuro would just be like, you know what? Here's a mode that GN can't even beat. So yeah, if you're really worried about his viability, he's certainly still viable today. Now that is for the overview. Next, slide I have here, like a freaking college professor, would be GN's banner value. To understand if I want to like tell you to pull for a character, let's take a look at their banner value as well. Because here's where like casual players that don't just have all the four stars really have to pay attention. So with GN's banner value, you get GN for sure rated up. And for the four stars that are rated up, we see Yuhu, we see Sanhua, we see more Teffy. Now that is pretty good, right? Here are my three points. First point, Yuhu would be available. Here's a new character. Should you pull for her though? You don't just pull for her banner you don't want the five star uffed for a four shot right now given for the recent patch you who is available in the store to exchange it right away you can buy one off so you don't really have a reason to pull only for you who in this banner yeah however if you love you who or you see her as something extra that if you get her great if you get some of her wave bands as well that'd be great then you who is in this banner it's not that bad to pull on moving on we have two other characters second point being the perfect support for gn Morteffi is in the same banner so if you're a big gn fan and you decide to pull for him in the end, you really, really want to pull this because more Teffy is right beside him. Get some wave ban of him as well. And for people that already has GN that really need one more more Teffy wave ban, let's say, you can pull for this because more Teffy is rated up too. It's a pretty good banner, like genuinely, because for the third point as well, a really good support is also in there in San Juan. This is also a tier 0.5 support, which is a really sought after type of character because these type of characters, they just stand on field really quickly and get out with the full buffs for a main DPS. It's really good. 
said, for players that want to pick up some wave bands as well, maybe you have like, say, 20 pool surplus, you may not want to miss out on this chance of just maybe getting a San Juan, maybe getting that final Mortefi wave band, right? So that is for GN's banner value. I would say it's very high. Moving on though, we do see the main question. Should you be pulling for GN? Let's go through the pros and cons. The pros, I've got for you three points. He is a good win element DPS. You see, in Watering Ways, it's not like any other games where you just need two teams or three teams. You actually need a lot of elements, like a team for each element because of the way Tower Versity is designed. You see, in the hardest of endgame, which is the Tower Versity Overdrive mode, you need certain elements of DPS for certain stages to deal with the resistance of certain elements with the bosses. So if you're someone that only has Jinxi and say Xiangli Yao and you don't have a win DPS, that's great. You're gonna struggle a bit more against stages with say win resistance in say overdrive mode or say just in Tower Reversity itself as well. You may not be able to attain the win element buff which is up this week in Tower Reversity. With the trajectory of how crew games are designing their end game, in the future it might be possible that they are gonna release stages where it's only good per element, yeah? So you need a good fire DPS, a good win DPS, a good DPS for every element to really easily beat everything. If you're missing a win element DPS, this guy's your man. He can do everything you need. Point number two of his pros allows option to save Vigor and TOA. This is what I mentioned before. And you have to pull him just to have this like privilege. You don't have to, but it is an option though. And finally, it's easy to use. 100% parry doing ultimate as well for GN. This is pretty straightforward. Now, a lot of other 5 star also are easy to use, in my opinion. Like, Jin is way easier to use, but GN isn't hard either. So, as compared to like other 5 star, like say, perhaps Iron Core that has a lot of animation canceling, not that GN doesn't have it, but you don't really have to care about it. And moving on with the cons. GN's cons would be, in my opinion, not a lot at all. If anything, it's just better DPS may be coming. Now, to kind of spoil you on the end, of the video while well, Camellia, I personally think and speculate purely of speculation should be a DPS considering we had a healer, a bunch of supports coming in like recently. So the next one should be a DPS, which she just like completely destroyed GN in terms of value. She might, but is it likely? Not quite. So if you're a really big GN simp, you can still pull him. But yeah, that will be the pros and the cons. For me, I would say everyone's account's different. Everyone's personality is different. You should use these pros and cons that I've listed and end with your own answer. But generally speaking, I think if you are just a pure meta player, I wouldn't pull GN. Wait for someone like better to come, considering GN's an older character. If you're a casual gamer, you just love GN, go ahead and pull him. He can still be a really strong win element DPS. Considering career games still design stages based on elements, he should should never go to the point where she, he's unusable, right? And considering the banner value is pretty good as well for casual players, free to plays that don't have like wave bands on his Mortefi. This is a good chance to grab some. But yeah, finally though, well, me personally, I won't pull him. Familiar Enjoyers, you want to save your summits, right? So those are my analysis. Which brings us to the next um, point of the video would be the weapons. Now weapons, you should only bother if you want and decided to get GN anyway. And I'll just say, yeah, it's worth it if you do get GN. It's a really good 17% damage output versus Lustrous Rage which is a free uh five star weapon uh five star broad blade this is a really good one for gn not quite so good for anyone else it's usable for say Kalcharo, jinsi it's not perfect though right plus it's got crit damage which is perfect for someone like uh gn for sure and then again if you're like me or chameleon wonder you don't want to get anything in this version just save it all moving on finally we have the main topic should you pull gn well let's take a look at camellia which should be the character coming after this version speculation this is not leaks this is not nothing this is just my speculation based on very plausible logic she should be a damage dealer currently we have shorekeeper and before jeji it was chang li all of which isn't quite a main dps i could say chang li is but she's kind of like a sub slash main slash buffer so it's a pretty good chance that we're gonna see Camellia as a DPS. I just remember that Xiang Liya was a free DPS, basically, so kind of you know, I have my doubts. She might not be a DPS in the end, but we just had Shorekeeper. Only speculation. I feel like it's a pretty plausible one, though. If you're not someone that wants to pull for a main DPS, well, you pull for point number two. She hot as heck. And yeah, <laughs> that will be all for this video. In conclusion, again, pull for GN if you really like him. He's still a very viable character. And considering Kuro Games design stages based on elements, he might be usable for a long time to come. If you're a Camellia enjoyer like myself, save everything. Don't pull. Get Camellia in the end. If you're just a pure meta player, I would still say don't pull for GN pull for someone that's better that's going to be in tier zero that could be camellia or someone that comes later on and that will be all for my analysis whoever you decide to pull as long as you enjoy the game in the end that's all you gotta worry about so please do not take this video as your bible right you should do whatever the heck you like and that will be all for today and take care